It's time for Morning Soul Shine with Bridget, a podcast where we interview people who express their stories of triumph. I'm your host, Certified Life and Mindset Coach, Bridget Gibson. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Morning Soul Shine with Bridget. And guys, we're really excited to be with you as we continue to observe Domestic Violence Awareness Month. One out of four women are abused by an intimate partner, and one out of three men are abused by an intimate partner. And on this morning, we have a very, very special guest with us. Her name is Charmaine Marie. And guys, Charmaine is an author, an outreach leader, and inspirational speaker. She was born in Kansas City, Missouri, into a family who struggles with alcohol, drugs, anger, abuse, and poverty. She knows what it is like to become a product of your own environment. Choosing not to become another statistic and moving away from the streets of Kansas City, she now inspires other individuals to choose life for themselves in the midst of daily challenges that they may encounter. She now exposes her story to the world about overcoming alcoholism, sexual perversion, surviving domestic violence, broken relationships, incarceration, failure, anger, abuse, drugs, low self-esteem, abortion, and how the wrong path eventually leads to the right path after discovering her true worth in God. Her faith and trust in God causes her to be a warrior in the spirit realm. Through her story, she hopes to bring deliverance and healing to others. Her goal is to help others overcome strongholds, generational curses, and addictions in their lives. She now has an outreach ministry called Rainbows of Hope, giving back to pregnant mothers faced with difficult circumstances. Thanks so much, Charmaine, for being with us. Thank you, Bridget, for having me today. I really appreciate it. Oh, my goodness, Charmaine, as I read your bio, you really have a story of survival. You know, this month of October, we're recognizing the month as Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And so as I was reading your bio, domestic violence was one of your um, situations that you were in. Can you speak with us on this morning about how you came to be in a domestic violence situation? Okay, thank you so much, uh, Bridget, for giving me the opportunity to come here to share my story today. And one thing that I would say as a young girl growing up in a a single parent household uh, without my father, you know, for me, I I was looking for, I would say, love, you know, in all the wrong places. And I, as a little girl, seen my mom with a lot of different men. And I also seeing my father with a lot of different women. And so, you know, I was the only child. I was like grandma's baby. And um, so I think for me, when you, from my understanding or my perspective, I would say, when you see your parents, okay, do certain things, then you, it's, it's like embedded in your DNA now, you know? The, the whole, mm-hmm. um, what, what would I say, cycles and generational curses and things like that, you know, uh, how we create different habits and things like that in our life. So for me, this is what I saw. So as a young girl, I started having sex at 12 years old. So for me, I was, I wanted to be or feel loved. And, you know, so I started having sex and I started dating different guys and, you know, I had, I, I was in the streets, you know, and I wanted to be out there. I wanted to do my own thing. I always 
have been a strong willed person. You know, God gives us free will. And for me, I have exercised my free will. I have done everything I wanted to do. Right. And so um, I mean, growing up in Kansas City, you know, and having friends that are, you know, more experienced than you. And they tell you certain things and the peer, what's it called? The peer pressure. I never peer really peer was pressure. one. To, I never really was one to be a follower. Okay. I was never a follower, but I was around people. And then in the environment with people that, you know, were very promiscuous, I would say. And so as I begin, you know, continue to be promiscuous and, you know, struggle with my, um, you know, sexuality and things like that. Um, yeah, I started having sex at 12 and then I just got into the wrong relationships with, you know, different people. And so it became a repetitive cycle for me, you know, um, and I, you know, and then also I was drinking, I was in the streets, I was drinking alcohol, you know, my grandfather, he, uh, died from drinking. Okay. My grandfather, Mm -hmm when my dad was a young child. So um, here we are back to the cycles of life and uh, the generational uh, traumatic experiences that we have had throughout our family bloodline, right? So, you know, with the whole, um, how did I get into these domestic relationships is because, you know, I was, I was jumping out of one relationship to the next, you know, soul ties were created, um, I didn't know who I was as a woman of God. I didn't know my identity because I was searching for my identity through people that I had, you know, pretty much laid down with. Okay. So when you lay down with someone, you know, you're picking up on this person's spirit, you're leaving a part of your soul with this person, you know, so uh, yeah, I was drinking and, you know, I 18, I had got pregnant and then I um, had an abortion, you know, because I didn't know who the father was. I was just promiscuous out there sleeping around. And then, you know, I was basically, um, you know, I think for me when I was, that was at 18. Okay. So after 18, You know, and I mean, even still after I gave my life over to Christ, I still had struggles. You know, I had to fast and pray, ask God to pretty much help me, you know, with my sex addiction, because that was something that I used to love to do. I wanted to have sex all the time, you know, and I had to really fast and ask God to take that away from me. And I found myself just in these relationships with these toxic men, you know, um, that didn't know who they were. And so then I, you know, in, I found myself in toxic relationships with these people. And so that's really, you know, how I got into these domestic violence relationships. I mean, you know, even when I was younger, I dated drug dealers, you know, um, guys that, you know, they had, if they didn't have no money, I wasn't messing with them. You know, I had that mentality. (laughs) So that's pretty much how I got into these domestic, you know, relationships with people. And then I jumped into marriages, you know, with, with people that really didn't line up with my morals and values in life um, and then having children with these people and then, you know, getting divorced and getting remarried. Like it's, it's so many things that led up to me, you know, getting, getting into these domestic relationships with these individuals that I had no business being with. Well, Charmaine, we really appreciate you sharing your story with us. And so, you know, when you and I had decided to talk about, you know, the domestic violence, we decided to talk about the generational curses. Because, you know, a lot of people, when we're talking about domestic violence and abuse, it's mostly about what happened in the situation. But we never talk about what happened prior to the situation. And you were saying that you were raised um, where there was a lot of, you know, drug use, alcoholism, um, you know, just one thing after the next. Can you tell me the effects of that 
you know, growing up as a child in a home like that? Well, you know, one thing that I would say is that it's not like I grew up in a bad household. It's just that my father wasn't there. And so my mom, she did the best that she could do, you know, Mm -hmm. and um, she had her own identity struggles. My father had his own identity issues, things that they had been through in their own life. Mm -hmm. Um, My mom was. I think her father pretty much um, used to watch her sleep with her brother. And I had I had no idea that my mom had went through this at five years old. And, you know, this is something that I mean, you're talking about a five year a five year old little girl having sex with her brother and her father is watching them. That is like I, I don't even know what. I mean, it's really sexually perverted is what I would say. And so for my dad, uh, I can recall that his sister had either molested him or touched him. I'm not too for sure as to what happened or occurred in that story or that situation. Mm-hmm. All I could tell you is that for me, <clears throat> um, you know, growing up with parents that really didn't know who they were. And they didn't teach me, you know, I try to teach my kids about, you know, God, who they are in God, whose they are, you know. And so for me, it was a little bit different. You know, my mom always, I seen her read her Bible, but I never really like, you know, I'm, and I remember getting baptized as a little girl, like as a kid when I was eight. I was always spiritual. I never been like the religious type of person, but I was always spiritual. And so even with my parents having their own identity struggles and issues, you know, when you bring a child into um, a situation like this, it leaves the, it, it leaves the child lost. OK, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I think there's a scripture that says, you know, a, a child. It talks about a child that is left to themselves, okay? And so for me, I was here, there, and and yonder doing everything, everybody under the sun, you know, growing up in Kansas City, Missouri. If you know anything about Kansas City, I mean, it's just, it's, it's a lot, you know, especially when I grew up in the time that I did, you know, and I'm an 80s baby. But it was, and then, you know, having parents that are young, don't, Mm -hmm. it does not make it any better. You know, you have, now you got kids raising kids. Okay. (laughs) You know, and, and, and it's like, okay, the kids are just left to themselves. And I'm like, you know, so I started drinking, you know, my mom used to struggle with drinking and my dad never really drunk alcohol because his dad died from it. But then, mm-hmm. you know, I think my mom had her ex-husband, you know, he was like, um, he, he ended up, she's a widow because he ended up being killed behind drugs because he did drugs. And so I never like, for me, I tried drugs. Like I used, you know, tried ecstasy pills and stuff like that when I was a young girl and, you know, just having all of these bottled up emotions on the inside, you know, from the alcohol to trying drugs to being sexually promiscuous, that creates anger. Okay. It's like, okay, where's my father? You know, because even though you're a young girl and you're out here and you're sexually exploiting yourself and you're giving yourself to all of these different men and you know, in the back of your mind that these people really don't love you. So yeah, it creates frustration. It creates the mental, you know, mental, uh, the mental, uh, inability. Okay. Um, it creates, um, you know, all of those frustrations and, and then you're left with like, okay, well, where is my dad? Where is, where is he at? What is he doing? Mm-hmm. And then when you go with dad, dad is with all these different women. He's dropping you off here. He's dropping you off there. Your mom is my flying here doing this with that man and that man. And here I am left with grandma or one of at my auntie or uncle's house, mm-hmm. or I'm just lying to my mom saying, I'm going to my friend. Marquita house and I'm really at home with men doing whatever I want to do in her house okay so it's it, it leaves you with um I would just say uh emotional bondage that's the word that I wanted to say 
it because all of this stuff now becomes a stronghold. So now you're talking about breaking generational curses. Mm-hmm. How do we, how do we, you know what I mean? Um, overcome these strongholds that we have created, you know? So then it right. takes you, you know, it's, it's so many different things and people don't really like to talk about this, but it creates all kind of stuff. You know, I was, I was married to somebody that he had sexual issues through his, his family. Okay. Mm-hmm. I was, his sister touched him. He was 20 years older than me. So he struggled with his identity when we got married. And, and even though I knew who I was, I had to still recognize that he had his own story. This is my story, but this is how the devil works. He'll put mm-hmm. you with somebody. If you're not careful, they got the same issues as you. So y'all can destroy each other. <laughs> Amen. You know? Amen. Amen. And so. It gives you low self-esteem. I mean, you know, all of these things because, you know, some alcohol and drugs, you know, abuse will lead lead you to poverty. Okay. And Mm -hmm. if you already come from a family that have dealt with it, you know what I'm saying? So it's so many things to to talk about here when you when you're dealing with the strongholds and the frustrations of the strongholds, how were they created? You know, how do we overcome this? How do we we get free, you know, from all of the challenges? You know, what what's next? You know, after all of these things that we've struggled with through our our family bloodline or through our mom's side of the family or on the dad's side of the family, you know? So that's what I would say uh, for me, you know, when it comes to that topic or situation. And, you know, Charmaine, you're not the only one. You know, there's so many of us who struggle uh, with strongholds from just environmental hurt. You know, I know for years I struggled and have struggled with unforgiveness because mm-hmm. of being molested as a young girl. Unforgiveness for the the perpetrators as well as for my mom, who I felt um, should have protected me. Mm-hmm. So we all have some things that to overcome. And so I'm just so happy that you have overcome and you are helping others to overcome and recognizing these strongholds because that's what they are. And the way that you have it in your bio, it's like I can just see it. Alcoholism, stronghold, Um, Mm -hmm. sexual perversion, stronghold. You know, if you can write it down, like, you know, we can encourage people, write down the things that the hurts and the pains and the, you know, the sins that you are, involved with or have been involved with and write them on on a piece of paper look at them because sometimes we'll live in a situation and not really look at what we're doing do you agree with that yeah most definitely I I've been a journalist I would say since I was a little girl you know it's very important I think to journal to write things down to get those emotions out um I have like six journals right now of things that I need to get out to the world, like things that I need to share that God has given to me um, during my spiritual awakening process, you know? And so, and that's, that's really, you know, what it's about, you know, it's, it's really about, um, you know, being honest, you know, Mm -hmm. Hey, what am I dealing with? You know, cause, and I'm, I'm about to, I'm glad that you talked about unforgiveness, Bridget, because uh, some of the things that now, on my new spiritual journey of being able to overcome, um, you know, alcoholism, like I've, I've had two DUIs, you know, uh, when I was a young girl, I mean, years ago, but I'm just mm-hmm. being transparent about things that I dealt with, you know, um, I don't know how many sexual partners I had. You know, because I was just out there being sexually promiscuous. But will God keep you? Yes. I thank God every day for keeping me, um, my health intact. You know, God says that he heals all diseases and he will forgive all of your sins. So that is very true when I look at my own life. So I can't thank God 
enough, but sometimes we're not honest. You know, it's like we'll stay for me. I stayed in a, a marriage for eight years, knew, that mar- knew the man was broken. OK, and I tried to heal him in the process of me healing him. I, I you know, I I was broken in the end. Mm-hmm. And it's like we'll stay in stuff, you know, and we'll deal with um like you said, unforgiveness, I've dealt with the despair of loss. You know, I lost my business in 2020, walked away from the marriage because it was abusive, went through the divorce and then lost my grandmother in 2021. So I had, yeah, I had to, I was healed. You know, it's like, I mean, it was, I mean, God, it's like, he was just hitting me with stuff back to back, seeing how I was going to handle it. And then I didn't have my mom here. You know, I was I was dealing with me and her relationship and then still trying to build a stronger relationship with my dad. And, you know, now she's here with me and the children. But those, those that almost but two and a half years, I had to go through all of that alone. So I was dealing with unforgiveness, too. I, I you know, so all of these these different things, you know, it, it leads up to being honest with yourself. You know, it's like, OK. And it made me angry. All this stuff that you reading in my bio that I have been through, it made me so angry, you know. <laughs> and then it, and then I, I had to, I had low self esteem, so I had to learn how to love myself. I had to walk away from a person that I love so dearly with my heart. Pray for for seven years. I mean, pray like personally, personally had a prayer closet for this person. This is some stuff I never did or even shared with somebody, you know, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. having to walk away from somebody that you love and having, you had to leave them in the cold. Cause, and you, when you're not that type of person, it, it, yeah, you know, you got some issues there, you know? So I've dealt with all of that, you know? So you have to be honest with yourself about, you know, these things, you know, a lot of people um, don't understand either is that you know stronghold is is something that set it sets itself up okay it exalts itself in our minds pretending to be bigger or more powerful than God Mm -hmm. you know it steals much of our focus and then it causes us to feel overpowered so I've had the feeling of all of these things we're talking about you know like you said um it's, it's a lot of strongholds. It's different spirits, you know, just like as it's, it's many lords, as many gods, as many spirits, you know, you got mm-hmm. good spirits, you got bad spirits. And so this is why we're supposed to test the spirit to see if it is of God, you know. So when it talk, when you talk about journaling, it's good. It's good to get those thoughts out on paper. I've done it. I still um, write things down. I believe in writing, reading, you know, really having that personal relationship with God, allow him to speak to you, you know, being really personal. You know, I've never, like I said, been a religious person, but I'm a spiritual person. So Mm -hmm. when you spiritual, you take full examination of yourself, not other people. It's you. You got to deal with you about you. Amen. Amen. Oh, wow. Oh, this is such a great conversation because, you know, we use these, these strongholds are are built because Mm -hmm. of hurt, because of hurt and pain. So let's give an example. So if you were raised in the home that where you've seen a lot of abuse and so the abuse caused trauma in your body, right? So in order for you to deal with the trauma, you may turn to alcohol. So then you'll start drinking alcohol, which may lead you to have sex with different people, which cause strongholds, which cause uh, soul ties. Then you may use drugs to get over the soul tie that you created. So now you have alcohol, the soul tie, and the drugs. Mm -hmm. So can you talk about that um, with us, Charmaine? How do we get rid of these these strongholds? You know, I would say for for me, um, 
I had to, okay, so I didn't have anybody to teach me. And I think, you know, the last season of my life, because clearly I'm in a new chapter, okay? Mm -hmm. And God is using me to now help other women that are spiritual to heal from ancestral trauma without the hassle of taking medication through the soul healing method, right? Okay. So that's what I'm, I'm called to do. That's what I'm going to be doing. Showing people, okay, how do we, how do, how do, how do you overcome? Cause this, all of this is in the bio, you know, I had to bring me back to this bio when I was going through the lowest moment of my life. And I'm like, okay, God is this part. I, I, I literally have prophesied my whole life, my whole life story, you know, even this, this book and my my other book that I'm writing, Rejecting the Spirit of a Harlot, you know, Broken Covenant, it's like I literally prophesied this. So when you start to talk about, you know, how the wrong path for me eventually leads to the light and discovering my true worth in God, okay, and putting my faith and trust, like God will put you in a situation to where you won't have no choice but to trust, trust him. To a, and allow him to overcome these strongholds that you're dealing with in your life and to break the curse for you. Because I've been in a time, uh, I, w- I remember I was in a time in my life where I was still, I was dealing with spiritual wickedness in high places. Mm-hmm. And I could not fight. I could not fight on my own. I could not fight, you know. And so I was like, you know, the Bible talked about I'm, I'm going to keep it real with you because I'm going to just, I'm not going to be so spiritual right now. I'm just going to be who I am because this is who I am. <laughs> I always, you talk about domestic violence, mom. Okay. I will love somebody so much, but if I was to get into a fight with you, I'm telling you, I would bust you upside your head. Like mm-hmm. I always was fighting. I felt like all my life, I've been fighting. Well, what movie was that? Was that on Oprah? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Per- what well, was it? The color purple. When Oprah yeah, so was. so the old me, I will be quick to fight. Like I wouldn't care. Like I always been a fighter. My grandmother, like I said, she just died at what ninety three. She was a she was a praying woman, a fighter. I know my grandmother had been through a lot. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I even have strong women in my family that have been through a lot. And I come from a strong family of faith. Okay. And so um, I began to, I mean, through my life experiences, you know, you go to church and stuff. For me, I'm I'm called to people that have uh, made numerous mistakes, right? Mm-hmm. I'm, 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 I'm called to people that, um, people that are brokenhearted. They have made numerous mistakes. The person that feel like, okay, God ain't gonna forgive me, you know, because I didn't, li- I, I didn't, I didn't went down this road when I know He told me to go do this or do that, you know. So that's why I'm here. I'm here to, to pretty much to be able to comfort and edify and and to show people like despite your failures, despite your struggle, despite, you know, whatever it is that you're going through, that there is another side. Okay. Because for me, I didn't know how to fight. I didn't have people to to teach me. You know, I had met strangers along the way that Mm -hmm. taught me about God, you know, and then I, I started going to church, but church wasn't for me. It never has been. Okay. And so I was just like, okay, God, like my walk with God has been some like some straight up. uh, Let's see. How can I say it? What's the word I want to say? Uh, He has been a a brother that has. uh, um, What am I trying to say? Oh, a brother that sticks closer than a mother or something like that. It's just saying something like that. So, no, even when my mother and father forsake me, God was there, right? That's right. And he is, uh, you know, he he's sticks, a friend. He yeah, sticks he, closer than anybody. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, for me, I was like, 
I, I didn't know. I was like, you know, even with me stepping into this, this soul healing position that God gave me, I was like, okay, God, what do you want me to do? Mm-hmm. You know, he's, he's like, I want you to help people heal. I want you to help women heal. You know, I mean, he gave me rainbows of hope and rainbows of hope is a big deal in itself. Okay. Because even when God gave me my ministry, rainbows of hope now giving back to pregnant mothers with unexpected pregnancies that ministry came from me okay mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i to support my daughter on mother's day weekend now that a ministry doing this after i was i didn't i didn't abort her but i chose life so that's 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 even that's a story so it's like okay i had to learn how to fight though not fight with um worldly weapons you know, I didn't had a gun before I come from the streets. I used to be my cousin. He would say angelic hood healer. OK. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and for me, I had to learn how to fight. So I'm like, OK, God, what do you want me to? Well, what's the soul healing method? You know, he's like, I want you to show people how how, how what's the counter strategy that mm-hmm. they're going to that they're going to use to overcome these strongholds. OK. And in the uh, generational curses and you're going to help people break free from addiction. And I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, you know, this is a great idea, but how I'm going to do this? You know, mm-hmm. it's like he telling me, giving me a recipe on what he want me to do. And then I got to whip up the ingredients. Like, you know, that's right. And- he gave you all the experience. And everything <laughs> to- yep. And I was like. Yeah. And I'm like, I mean, I think it's amazing. I'm very creative. I co-create with spirit. And, um, you know, the battle, the battlefield starts in the mind, you know, Um, and then it's starting your mouth. And so a lot of people talk about fighting. But what I find out is that like uh, people in church or Christian folks, they don't understand. They don't understand their own life because they don't understand that though we in the world, we don't wage, you know, war as the world does. We mm-hmm. don't fight like the world. So that's this is the key principle. It says that the weapons that we fight are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, mm-hmm. you know, they have diverse power to demolish strongholds. So how do you demolish a stronghold? You know, it says we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. Mm-hmm. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So a lot of people don't understand why the word of God is important. So even though I'm not a church goer and I never really was a religious person, I always studied the word of God. Mm-hmm. And it was through the word of God because that's that's the soul healing method. My soul healing method is based on Psalms 107 and 20. Okay. It okay. was three things in this scripture that God did in, in Psalms 107 and 20. I don't know if you want to pull it up. I mean, it was it's really, yeah, it's really honestly good. I was like, you know, when I, I was praying, I said, okay, God, what is this soul healing method? How are we going to get people, you know, me personally, help other women to break free? Uh, and I mean, because, you know, just a lot of people think because you're spiritual, like you didn't arrive. No, that's not the case. Just because you're spiritual, God came for sick people. He never called righteous people. He came to sick people. So, I'm going to have to help sick people as a healer. I'm not trying to heal people that think they already heal. Need they don't need no healing. That don't make sense, you know. That's not why Christ came. So, so Psalms one hundred seven twenty says He mm-hmm. sent His word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Okay, so there was three things that He did. He sent the word. He healed them. And then he delivered them from their destructions. So, you know, when you go to John 17 and 17, it says, sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is thy truth. So if this is the truth, you know, and the battlefield is the mind, this is where warfare is waged by the enemy against a person is in your mind. You know, it starts in your mind. So. You know, a stronghold, it's an argument. It's, you know, it's a pre, 
attention is something that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. You know, that's right. That's right. And so it's it's like, you know, um, whether the stronghold is an addiction of forgiveness towards a person, you know, somebody that hurt us, despair over loss, or it's something that consumes us so much emotionally um, and mentally that the abundant life is strangled. So God gave me rainbows of hope because I am hope for other women. And my ministry is based on, I call it my charity because love is charity, right? Love covers a multitude of sins. So um, he gave me John 10 and 10. It's like, why did Christ came? He came so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. But how do Amen. you access? How do you access this abundant life? Right? You know how do you how do you create heaven on earth? So you got to get free. You know you have to get free. And so you know the the weapons. I can't hear you. Can you hear? Me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Oh, I think it was like a recording in, or in the background or something came through. Okay. I don't know what that is. And um yeah, oh, yeah. so so your um I'll cut that out. So your mission uh, with rainbows, um, can you talk to us about that uh, mission that you have? Uh well rainbows of hope. Um, actually, I, you know, I now live in Mexico, but it's actually uh, a nonprofit in America. So okay. even with, you know, Rainbows of Hope, I'm still, you know, helping women to basically, um, you know, heal from uh, past ancestral trauma. You know, it's basically here in Mexico, I help women that are homeless, either they are homeless or, um, you know, impoverished. I go to the um, actual communities here. Um, I do missionary work here. So I work with people when they find me a mom to do baby baskets for and things of that nature. That's pretty much what I do. I cater to the needs of the baby. So, you know, buying baby clothes, doing baby baskets, diapers, milk, um, things of that nature. So, yeah, it's called Rainbows of Hope. Wow, that's amazing. And you said that you've written a book? Yeah, actually, I do have a book. It's called The Healing Power of the Glory in My Story. So this is me just telling my story. I have another book coming out um, that I'm working on. Actually, I don't even know if I really honestly want to work write the book because it's, it's so much information. I'm thinking about doing um, maybe a, to- a talk show or something, you know, um, mm-hmm. having women to come on there and share and talk about, you know, their stories about how they rejected the spirit of a harlot. Wow, that's amazing. That is so amazing. Charmaine, I'm just so happy I've met you. You and I met on Clubhouse. And so do you have any rooms on Clubhouse? I actually do. I am on, you can find me on Facebook, my Arthur page. Uh, I have honestly taken a sabbatical though from social media. Okay. And, you know, sometimes we have to do that. (laughs) But I do, I have um, clubs on Clubhouse and I, I probably should be more, I would say, consistent in, you know, having more hosting more rooms, you know, and holding space for uh, women and people. I do have a room called The Power of Your Story. So you can find me on there. Um, and yeah, I, you know, I share my story with those who who need it, who want to hear it, you know, uh, they want to understand how do I get free from the stronghold, the generational purge, you know, what are, what are my weapons, you know, according to the word of God, I talk, I talk a lot about um, spiritual warfare and I, mm-hmm. I, I teach about weapons. Okay. Because people don't understand how to fight. You got people that have been walking with Christ for years and they don't understand how to fight. So you fought when you was in the world. How do you fight now that you are a believer in Christ? Mm -hmm. What's the method? So a lot of people are not knowledgeable. So I'm very big on that. 
And um, yeah, I have another club on there called um, on Clubhouse is called Soul Healers. You know, uh, this is basically for other women that are healers um, that may be called, called towards being a healer, sharing their gifts with the world. OK. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, as a healer, it's like, how do I answer that? You know, I've been looking to get into into healing, but it's like, how do I start building that momentum? Okay. How do you mm-hmm. learn how to show up in the world as a healer? And what does that look like for you? So I have a room for that. And um, I also have another room called, it's called Jezebel Seducing Spirits. So in this room, we talk about the spirit of a, Je- a Jezebel, not mm-hmm. necessarily, um, you know, what gender she was or he was or you know the person that you went through uh breaking this ungodly sexual soul tie with we Mm -hmm. deal with the spirit of jezebel what does this look like okay so we talk about the dangers of soul ties uh pornography masturbation we talk about even what pagan is you know and homosexuality you know trans uh sexually transmitted demons, uh, doctrines of devil, seducing spirits, witchcraft, evil altars. Like, you know, when you get into some of these terms, these are some things that I break down. Uh, And my teaching method, how I teach other people is to really study and to break down. I'm not a preacher. That's not me. That's not my teaching style. So you got to give people knowledge. You know, God is a God of knowledge. So if you don't have knowledge about God and the word and who he is and he sent the word, then how can we be free from something we don't have knowledge of? Amen. 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 Whew. Charmaine, you are a powerful woman. You are very powerful and God is using you. And I'm just so happy that you joined me on Morning Soul Shine with Bridget. And so is there anything else you would like to tell the audience? Um, I just really would like to say, you know, if there's if it's someone out there that has left a toxic relationship, um, they need guidance on how to release um, soul ties to retrieve back the pieces of their soul. Um, you know, through my story, that's that's what I do. I help women to basically release spiritual entities to overcome uh, the generational curses and addiction. You know, I'm here for those women. I'm here for the women that want to identify, you know, where those deep wounds occurred and help them uh, assist them in healing, you know, teaching them also, you know, it's like, how do I rewrite? My, how do I redeem back my birthright? Right. You know, because mm-hmm. after you after you go through, um, after you release a soul tie, you got to go through the soul retrieval process. Mm-hmm. People don't know that. They may break the soul tie, but then they don't retrieve back the pieces to their soul. So it's like, what? where is the lost pieces at to my soul? How do I rewrite this thing? You know, how mm-hmm. do I, how do I release the generational blessings now after all, after going through all the curses and, and you know, breaking them? And demolishing them through the word of God and he him him setting me free because he came and set the captives free, right? It's mm-hmm. like, how do I rewrite this thing? So I'm here for women that you know uh either have a story or I'm here to just really assist them in healing in that area. Um, how how do you understand also? Um, I'm here for women that need to understand like why it's important for their womb to be purified. Right. Um, because it helps you to eliminate those karmas, to heal, you know, physical ailments, to clear heartbreak, heal negative and also abusive sexuality. So sometimes I would say what seemed like a heartbreak was actually a rebirth. Okay? Mm-hmm. So and you don't you don't owe other people anything because this is domestic violence month. Right. You don't owe people ex- explanation on why you left a toxic relationship. You don't owe people nobody anything. OK, Amen. if you want to just get up today and leave, because that's what I did. He was at work. I packed my stuff. When he came home, I was gone. There is no explanation. Not after I've been here for eight years of my life trying to figure this thing out with you. There's no explanation. So we have to get to that point. And so, yeah, I also do soul detoxification uh, sessions with people. 
And um, that's really what I would like to do. I would like to show women how I I teach them through my 80 day is 80 days, my detox program of on how I healed myself. Okay. Uh, Post traumatic stress disorder, addiction, and uh, healing myself also from black magic. So that's that's what I do, you know. So I just want to show up and be the light worker I am for other people that may need help from me. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Charmaine Marie, for being on Morning Soul Shine with Bridget. And guys, we will talk to you on next week. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bridget. What I'm going to.